Welcome to our wellbeing series, Coping Well During COVID. Um, it's so, we're so excited to be able to offer this to you today. And thank you for taking the time out of your busy lives to join us today. My name is Emily Gardner and I'm a cognitive behavioural therapist and I work for the NHS in London. I am accredited to deliver specialised therapy in, for people with anxiety and depression. And today's session, we're going to be looking at managing low mood. Okay. So this wellbeing series is designed to provide you with a toolkit of evidence-based resources, tools, and ideas. And the idea behind this toolkit is we really want to help support you over the next few days, weeks, and months. And the content of each of these sessions is based on cognitive behavioural therapy, which is an effective treatment for depression, anxiety, and it focuses on making changes to our thoughts as well as our behaviour to improve the way that we feel. Today, we're going to be looking at two common vicious cycles. Um, and these cycles will often make you feel low in mood. The first is a reduced activity cycle and the second is a boom and bust cycle. And after we've gone through both of those cycles, we're going to then spend a bit of time on a couple of ideas and tips to help you to break into those vicious cycles and improve the way that you feel. So, I want you to think about what you hope to get out of this webinar today and just spend a few moments thinking about that now. When we have delivered this as a webinar, we asked our audience this same question and so they shared with us their hopes for the webinar. And um, some of them said that they would like to learn how to support themselves or their friends and family. Someone else said that they'd like coping strategies to help with the bad days and the feeling of isolation and loneliness. Someone else said that they would like to learn some things for themselves, but also in their work. Someone would like to know some tips for carry on, carrying on as normal. Someone would like to know the signs and symptoms and what to look out for and how to be more resilient to the effects of low mood. All of these things and more, um, as you can see on that slide there, we are gonna be covering in today's webinar. And so hopefully the hopes that you have for today will be met as well. So what I'd like you to think about now is what you're finding the most difficult about this time. And there are a number of challenges that you may well have been experiencing over the last few weeks and months. So I want you to just think about now what those challenges have been like for you and how things have been for you. Um, when I asked this question um, I, as part of our webinar series, um, some of the responses that we had um, were about the isolation and disruption to routine and normality. Um, someone else said that the usual way of helping my mood, like socialising, exercising, going out for walks, etc., are more stressful and difficult. Someone else mentioned that they felt like their life was on hold. They're so used to be able to plan things and that's not been possible. The social aspect and loneliness as a consequence. That sense that there wasn't a light at the end of the tunnel. The worry that we'll go back to where we were a couple of months ago with winter approaching. Um, someone else said, um, working from home, homeschooling children and studying and struggling with motivation. And someone else said that not having control, not having a plan and feeling powerless. And someone else mentioned that the uncertainty has been really hard to manage and not being able to see family who live far away, not knowing when they'll be able to see colleagues again. And these challenges have been hard and it has been going on for a while. 
And we just want to remind you that it's okay to not feel okay. In, and in fact, it's understandable that you are feeling the way that you feel. We have been through a lot of changes to our daily lives. The structure, structure and routine of our lives has been thrown up in the air. And these changes that we have had to make um, to prevent the spread of this virus have been absolutely essential for our physical health. But unfortunately, they have a knock-on effect on our mental health. And these circumstances are not normal. By no means, <laughs> they're not normal. Um, we've had to go through a lot of things that are unusual and different. But our reaction to those stresses are normal, is normal. Some of you may be struggling right now and feel like you have nowhere to turn. And whilst this session is intended to help you to find ways to manage your mood and improve how you feel, you may feel like you need more urgent support. If you're having thoughts of suicide or of harming yourself in any way, please speak to someone. We recommend the Samaritans and they are a fantastic organization and they're here for you at any time of day or night. And you can call them on 116123. And we will provide more information at the end of this session for further support and resources um, that you can um, get more support that you might need. So um, today we're thinking about low mood and we're thinking about understanding some of those um, symptoms of low mood to start with. And what we have here is a five areas model, which is a really common um, way of understanding and breaking down the experience of low mood or anxiety. So we use this quite a lot in cognitive behavioral therapy. And it's really helpful to break down the experience of low mood and really understand what's going on. And so we start by looking at those life events at the very top of the cycle here. So what are you going through? And we've already asked the question, what are the, some of the things that you're finding difficult? Some of those life events and changes. And those will naturally have a knock-on effect on how we feel. And the first thing that we tend to notice can often be our thoughts. So the type of thoughts we're having about our situation and about what we're going through. And often these thoughts can be quite negative as well. And those thoughts will have a knock on effect on how we feel physically. So the way that we feel in terms of our body and what's going on inside our body. So for instance, we might notice an increase in heart rate we may notice um, a lack of energy or tiredness or fatigue. And those thoughts and those um, physical symptoms will impact on our behaviours and how we respond. And so what we might find is that we're, because we're low in energy, um, we may find that we're not doing as much or we're avoiding things. And all of these areas knock on to how we feel and those emotions that we're experiencing. And those emotions can be any number of emotions such as anxiety, low mood, joy, sadness, anger. Um, so as an example. And I suppose it's really important to recognise that these all interact with each other. There's no one way round. It's not a one way cycle. Um, they kind of hit back and knock on effect onto all of the other areas. And that can feel really overwhelming at times if you're in the midst of that. And sometimes that can even feel like a spiral. Today, we're going to be looking at two common vicious cycles. And the first vicious cycle that we can fall into when we're feeling low in mood is a reduced activity cycle. Because we often have less energy or feel fatigued or have negative thoughts when we feel low in mood, our motivation often is reduced. And because of that, it can be really hard to do things. And so we may find ourselves reducing our total level of activity. And you may have found this as a result of being in lockdown or as a result of the restrictions that we've been in recently. And 
we may find that reducing our level of activity does in the short term provide us with a, um, a, a small sense of relief because we don't have to face it, we don't have to do it. However, when we don't face these things, it reinforces this behavior. And so we're more likely to repeat it. So we're more likely to avoid future things. Um, and eventually over time, we cut out the opportunity for pleasure and enjoyment as well as achievement. And so we may be left doing only the essential things. And when we, when we do this, it worsens how we feel. And as I said, it, it becomes a vicious cycle. And we start to feel that life is empty because we don't have things in our life that bring us joy or achievement or meaning. And over time, even those essential jobs become really difficult to do. In lockdown, this cycle may have been forced on you because you have been unable to do a lot of the things that you used to do. And there also can be a secondary impact um, because our lives um, have been thrown up in the air because of loss of motivation and because of the way that we feel, we may find that we have in an increased amount of work absences or we might not be as productive as we used to be. And because of that, that can cause further problems and it can feel like there's a growing weight on our shoulders. And so we can really get caught in this cycle of avoidance and reduced activity. Another cycle that we can fall into is a boom and bust cycle. And some of you may have found that as a result of lockdown restrictions, that there is an increased demand on your time. You may be juggling more than usual. If this is the case, then we can start to feel that the demands placed on us are more and more significant than the resources that we have to meet those demands. And as a result, this may result in us overachieving. So we push ourselves incredibly hard um, to achieve more and more until we're exhausted. This pushing ourselves, this overachieving is the boom part of our cycle. However, because we've pushed ourselves and we've burnt ourselves out, we then crash. Our mood and energy is gone. And then we can struggle to get going again. And so we reduce our total activity. So we do less, we avoid things. So maybe we're avoiding social activities or, um, or even routine activities. But the idea is we start to do not very much. And this is the bust part of our cycle. And because we're doing less and we're not doing as much, this makes us feel guilty. We feel bad about it. We feel annoyed with ourselves. So what we do is we then put pressure on ourselves to do more, to achieve more. And we set ourselves high targets. And then when we don't meet those targets, we feel disappointed. Or we just feel frustrated and exhausted, which pushes us deeper into that low mood. So as you can see here, when we are in a boom and bust cycle, our activity levels can start to look something like this. So earlier I talked about that roller coaster of emotions, and this might be why you're feeling that roller coaster, because it's up and down. One day you're feeling good and on top of the world, like you're managing really well. And the next day you crash and you can't face things. And if we continue this way, it will just continue like this and you'll have these good days and bad days, good days and bad days. However, what we can do is break the cycle by reducing the amount we might be doing overall initially and then start to gradually build up. So the way we do this is level out our activity levels. So instead of pushing ourselves really, really hard on those good days, we hold ourselves back a little, almost like we're saving some of that energy for the next day. But then on those bad days on those really difficult days where we find it really hard to get up and out, we need to push ourselves, pull ourselves up a little bit more to do a bit more so that we're doing a consistent level of activity every single day. And over time, as we do this, we can gradually build up and get back to where we want to be. But it may be that we do this really slowly. 
So in order to consider how to break both of these cycles, we need to think about our routines and our day-to-day -day lives. And as a result of this virus, your old routine is likely out of the window and everything has changed. And so you might be juggling working from home with looking after your children. Um, you may not be working at the moment as a result of being furloughed. And because of that, you're struggling to fill your time. So putting a routine in place can be really helpful in helping you to find a balance. So what are we gonna do about it? Well, there is a technique called behavioral activation, which can break both of these vicious cycles. So what is behavioral activation? Well, it's a technique which is designed to slowly build in structured activities. And it works by scheduling different types of activities and making sure that we follow the plan rather than the way that we feel. And the idea is that when we do those activities according to the plan, we break that cycle. So why do we use it? Well, a lot of research has shown it to be effective. It, it is in fact the most effective treatment for depression. Also, it does not require you to concentrate for long periods of time or think too much. And both of these things are things that people with depression often tell us that they struggle with. So when we look at the boom and bust cycle and the reduced activity cycle, in both, what we're doing is we're allowing how we feel inside to decide what we do. So we act from the inside out. Through behavioral activation, we want to start to allow our plan to decide what we do. And as a result, that will impact how we feel. So what we're doing is acting from the outside in. So we are sticking to the plan because we know it will make us feel better. So the first step, is to make a list of activities that you want to build into your life. Dividing them into three categories. Um, we have um, routine, necessary and pleasurable activities. And we need a balance of all three of these activities in order to maintain well-being. Much like a three-legged stool, if one of these areas is weaker, we will be out of balance and our stool will topple over. So we need to ensure that we have a balance of all three. So we start by thinking about all of the things that we maybe used to do that we're not doing now. And we need to consider each three of these areas. So step two from the list you've just made is to rate the activities from easiest to the most difficult. So rank them. And make sure you mix them up and include all routine, necessary and pleasurable activities. And it's important to think about how difficult it is for you now, not before when you were feeling better. And I have underlined here some of the things that might actually not be possible for you to do as a result of lockdown restrictions. And so it might be helpful to think a little bit about how you may have to adapt these activities to do something similar now. But I will also talk you through that later on in the session. And once you have your hierarchy, you then schedule your activities, starting with the easiest. So start at the bottom and work your way up to the top. So as you go through the weeks, you will eventually get through to the harder activities. However, if there's a really important necessary activity that you need to do now, um, it can be done even if it's a really difficult one. Um, and the way we do this is by breaking it down into smaller sections, um, smaller tasks that will make it more e well easier for you to achieve. And also it's important that you detail your activities um, accordingly. So um, provide as much detail as possible and be specific about when you're going to do it or achieve it. And then step four is to do it. Put those activities in action and act according to the plan rather than how you feel. 
And then the final step, um, step five, is to review it. And this is really important because sometimes you won't have done everything that you wanted to and you need to reflect on why. But also it's really important to recognize when you have achieved everything or at least most things and um, uh, recognize that. So consider how did completing these activities impact the way I feel? What other activities could I schedule in the next few weeks? If it was difficult to complete some of the activities, why were those activities difficult? And were they too advanced? Have I jumped too quickly? And what could I do to make that activity more achievable? Could you get a friend or partner to help you or remind you? So some of the things that you used to do, that you used to enjoy, might be a bit more difficult now, such as visiting family and friends, going to the gym, going out for a meal, going shopping. That can be a bit of a struggle and it can cause a little bit of anxiety and worry as well. And because of that, it may feel like there's no point in doing anything because you can't actually do the things that you want to do. Giving into this, unfortunately, will just take us deeper into that vicious cycle. So we need to do the opposite and find a way to do those things that bring us joy. So we may need to be creative about how we do those things. And it may be thinking about what it was that we enjoyed and how we can get that sense of enjoyment again. It may also be really hard to feel joyful right now. It may not come straight away and it may take time, especially if you haven't felt joy in a long time. And if nothing feels joyful, then just do anything that might make you feel slightly better or give you a, so a small sense of achievement or slight enjoyment. So just baby steps, you know, you don't have to put too much pressure on yourself right now. Just start small. So I want to ask you about whether or not you have any ideas about how you could still do some of the things that you used to enjoy. So is there anything that you used to love, that used to bring you joy, that you haven't done in a while? And how could you put that into your life again? And maybe that we need to be creative about this. So I've asked this question before um, in a previous webinar. And we had some really fantastic responses and I wanted to share them with you so that you have some ideas about what you could do to get that sense of joy back in your lives. So someone said daily walks whilst listening to motivational podcasts. Rather than buying takeaways, practice new recipes to do a home takeaway yourself. Um, I've taken a corner of my home to put my workout mat and work out there. I started to do some exercise videos that are apartment friendly. Brilliant. Um, do workouts in the park and go for runs with my partner instead of going to the gym or yoga classes with friends. Um, someone suggested having an under desk cross trainer or bike. That's such a good idea. Um, someone took, took up painting and found a group who do fun online tutorials. Arranging games nights, quizzes with friends and family. Um, any of these other ideas? Um, painting by numbers, um, a Zoom choir rehearsal, um, inviting a friend for a picnic in my garden, socially distanced, where we each bring our own food. So we can be creative and these are some great ideas um, that you can try yourself. Okay, so it may be that before lockdown, you enjoyed playing football and this, unfortunately, may not be possible for you right now. And as a result of that, that may feel really upsetting and it may be that you feel a great sense of loss as a result. And so it can be helpful to think about what you enjoyed about this activity and think about how you can still get that level of enjoyment, but in a slightly different way. So for example, with playing football, it may be that it was spending time with your friends do an doing an activity that we enjoy. So think about how you can still get that sense of enjoyment, but by doing something different. 
So for example, arranging with my teammates to play a video game together online. Or perhaps you used to really enjoy going to a social gathering and, and that's not going to be possible at the moment. So um, it may be that being able to connect with friends and laugh with them was something that you really found valuable. So instead, perhaps send a letter or a postcard or a gift to a friend to let them know that you're thinking of them so you can connect with them at a distance. Maybe it was going to an exercise class and it would, was really beneficial to you as it gave you that opportunity to exercise or stretch. So how can you adapt that? Well, go for a brisk walk with some stretching at the beginning or the end, um, which will still meet that, um, give you that opportunity. I have two examples of how I have been creative during lockdown. Um, I love going out for meals. Um, I'm a bit of a foodie and at times during the last few months, this has been something that unfortunately we've been unable to do. And so I thought about what it is that I enjoy about it. And it was spending quality time with my husband and trying new foods. And so once a week, we would get our children into bed early and my husband and I would cook together something that we would normally order from a restaurant. Um, and we would plan this in advance so that we'd have everything we need. We would try and pick something that we have never cooked before. I really enjoy using fresh herbs in my cooking. So I use this as an opportunity to build a little herb garden on my windowsill. And we would use these in our restaurant style meals. And we had a, a fantastic time learning new skills and trying recipes. And we really enjoyed it. And so even when those um, lockdown restrictions have lifted at times and we were able to go out for meals again, we've still continued doing this because we have loved it. It can be really hard when there are obstacles to doing the things that we enjoy and we can feel really discouraged and it can stop us from doing things. But what we need to do is see rather than obstacles, we need to consider them as opportunity to do things slightly differently. Prior to lockdown, I really enjoyed attending yoga classes. And as this is, has not been possible at times, I thought about how I could adapt to the limitations of lockdown. And I thought about what I enjoyed about this. And it was firstly that I made sure I exercised because I'd already committed to the class and paid for it. And so that meant that I would more likely go. So the first thing was committal. And the second thing that I liked about this was the opportunity to connect with new friends. And so I thought about what I could do that would still give me those same benefits. And so I arranged to meet up with a friend for a social distancing walk where my heart was beating fast enough that I, and I worked up a bit of a sweat um, but we could still talk and connect. I was surprised by how much I enjoyed this and the views were beautiful too. I even noticed the next day that I'd worked muscles that I hadn't used in a while and I learned never to underestimate the benefit of walking again. There's a reason why we were still allowed to go out for one hour of exercise at the peak of lockdown. And that is because exercise is one of the best things that we can do for our mental health. Exercise helps condition our body to handle stress better. Exercise increases the amount of serotonin that our body produces and has been found to be as effective as medication for improving mood. Exercise doesn't mean that we have to start wearing lycra or going to the gym. Not that we can at times, um, but going on walks is a fantastic start. If you are not sure that you can find the time, and this is probably a difficulty that many of you have, is limitations of time, then think about including it as part of your routine. So as part of your commute, for example. So walk some of the way or cycle some of the way if you can. If motivation is an obstacle for you and you really struggle to get going, and, and this is a really common challenge that lots of people with low mood face is that ability to just 
get out the door, get moving. So really recommend the five minute rule. So the five minute rule basically means just do it for five minutes and then review. And if you feel exhausted still and it's not benefiting you in any way, then you can give yourself permission to stop because you did it for five minutes. And that's, that's, that's great if you are struggling with low mood, that's fantastic. However, often when we do this, we actually find that it's just getting out the door that's the hardest part or getting dressed that's really challenging. And once we've overcome that part of it and we're, we're going, it's easier to continue. And so at the five minutes, you can review it. And if you feel able to continue, give yourself another five minutes and then review it and keep going until you want to stop. And this is a really good tip just to get you moving and out of the door. So what we need to do is pull all of these ideas together into our first week of activities. And it's really important that we start with the easiest activities and try to build up and making sure that we get a balance of activities making sure that we have a number of routine, necessary and pleasurable activities in our schedule. And so as you can see here, um, we have a, a really simple routine that you can start with. Um, and it may be that you start really small um, and build your way up. So our main take home messages from today's session is for you to consider whether or not you're in a reduced activity cycle or perhaps that boom and bust cycle. Ask yourself, are you acting from the inside out and can you start acting from the outside in? Have a go at scheduling a routine of a, a balance of activities that includes your routine, necessary and pleasurable activities. Be creative in finding ways of doing those things that you used to love and enjoy. And remember that exercise is just as effective as medication for improving mood. I wanted to um, share with you a little bit about what is in the slide pack that will accompany this video. We have a blank five areas module, which is something we talked about at the very beginning of today's session. And it's an opportunity to try it for yourself and consider all the different aspects of that five areas model that might be impacting the way that you feel. So have a go at that um, in your own time. We also wanted you to know where you can get further support and help if you need it. And there are some fantastic local IAP services all over England where you can access free psychological support. And this treatment can be done over the telephone or online. And you can find your local IAP service by registering with, um, by typing in your postcode and um, you'll find your local IAP service and they'll be offer, able to offer you free support. If you feel like you need urgent help for your mood or are having thoughts of harming yourself in any way, then please seek help. It's really important that you tell someone. We recommend that you first speak to your GP um, and if you feel able to do that, your GP will be able to point you in the right, um, right direction for that support. If you are unable to speak to your GP, um, then there are a number of organisations that you can contact to get support right away. The Samaritans are here to listen at any time of day or night and you can contact them on 116 123. You can text SHOUT on 85258 and they are able to offer you confidential crisis support over text message. If you are not sure what help you need then you can visit the NHS urgent support guidance and it will help you work out what kind of support is available to you. Also in the slide deck are some other useful resources and links for you um, which will hopefully help you to find support. And so much work has been done over the last few months in developing support for COVID-19. And we wanted you to have those resources here. So we've got those for you there. 
We've come to the end of our webinar today and I really hope that you found something useful and an idea or a tool that you want to put into place. However, it may be hard and you may feel like you're struggling to get going. And I wanted you to know that these techniques work. They are effective. So keep persisting with them and you will feel better. We do also have other episodes as part of this series. And so if you feel like you need more help, please come back and find more. I wish you all the best. Take care.